some threaded rod. This is 30 centimeters long or 300 millimeters. Um, you're going to need a hole saw. Yeah, should be available at any B&Q or I think in America they call it Home Depot. Now the size of this one, this is the smaller one of the two. This is 57 millimeters. And the size of this one is 64 millimeters. Now, in hindsight, I think I would have gone a little bit bigger on this one. Um, in inches, this is two and a quarter, two and a half inches, and this one is, um, I don't know, two and a quarter. This one's two and a half, this one's two and a quarter. But in hindsight, I would have gone a bit bigger on a bigger one, but let's see how it goes. Um, then a locking cap nut. You could use two nuts, but I chose a locking cap nut and two washers to suit. Um, we've also got two 17 mil. This is a, obviously a spanner, open end box spanner, with a ratchet on the end. Priceless, these are priceless. And we've got just a normal socket, a normal 17 mil socket. So let's start by constructing the rod itself. That's pretty easy. Put a washer on. Put this end cap on. We get the big end, put it there. And then we'll get the small end. That'll sit there. Washer and your nut. So this is the basic construction, how it's basically gonna work. So, Let's start by you doing it on the wishbone now. Now, the idea is to line up the lower wishbone with the inner part of the of the bushing itself. You don't want to do the rubber because the rubber will just rip out. So you want to line up this um, hole saw with the inner lining of the of the bushing. So make sure you get one that actually fits the bushing, gets gets a good kind of seat on the bushing, and um, you should be okay. So on the bigger hole saw, you want to be able just to sit around in this edge, to seat around this edge. Not so it, it, it obstructs it, just so it sits around it. So, you know, there's still a bit of movement there and you can still feel that it's not hindering it in any way. So this one has to be for the bigger side and let's give it a go, finally. Okay. So just slowly bring it up until we and get it in position. You know, just trying to make sure that we're getting it in a decent position. So we're pushing and pulling on the things we're meant to be pushing and pulling on. Be patient with it and you should get it. It's just a matter of tightening it up real slow. Like I said, this is a bit of a balancing act, but we're going to get it done. So, slowly and gently just start to tighten it up. Always making sure you're watching it just push where it's meant to push. You may have to stand up for this. This is where I said this is ingenious. This is where I said it's worth its weight in gold. Where you can Have a little check and make sure it's, it's touching what you want it to touch. 
See? Look. Can you see that? Okay. So let's get back to it. Just starting to move now, but you know me. A little bit of a cheat when it comes to this stuff. So, let's see if this works. Oh, that's noisy. <laughs> Now this would have worked easily with you just screwing it, but I can't be bothered with all that. <laughs> and there you have it. Simple DIY puller. So simple hole saws with a thread. The path probably came up to about eight pounds, 10 pounds max, much cheaper than anything else. And you would put it back in the much same way you took it off. So um, thanks for watching.